So a very important set of concepts to, to kind of get your head around is you know, the idea of a, of a scientific hypothesis and the idea of a scientific theory. And um, oftentimes in uh, sort of colloquial speech, um, the two are sort of bandied about as if they're the same thing. But a hypothesis is not a theory and a theory is not a hypothesis. They're two very different things. A scientific theory actually is far more extensive. It um, accounts for diverse observations uh, by proposing a model you know, that ties them all together. Um, it's an explanation for a large number of findings uh, in the natural world, including the world of psychology, actually, and certainly the relationship between you know, brain and behavior. Uh, it's the best explanation we have, at least until competing evidence comes along. Um, but scientific theories actually must do more than just account for existing data. That's what's really unique about them. Uh, they generate predictions, actually, regarding um, new data that we have not yet observed. Um, you know, for a theory to be scientific, it must be capable of generating novel predictions that researchers can actually test. So it's no good if it, pred <laughs> if it predicts things that are completely untestable. Uh, but if, it's, if it can predict something that is testable, well, that gives you a way to, to sort of, you know, test the validity of that theory. Does it actually make an accurate prediction? Uh, and a testable prediction is what we actually call a hypothesis. Um, so theories are uh, general explanations, uh, while hypotheses are specific predictions that are derived from these explanations. Uh, and there are some common misconceptions about scientific theories. One of the most common is that uh, a theory explains just a single event. So that's one of the most common misconceptions. That's a hypothesis, is a you know, specific prediction. Um, a theory doesn't explain just one event. A uh, very common error in popular media uh, your textbook, for example, is an example. The most likely theory for the bank robbery they, they write right at the downtown bank is that it was committed by two former bank employees who dressed up as armed guards. That's not a theory. Uh, it attempts to explain one event instead of a variety of diverse observations, and it doesn't generate any testable predictions, right? Um, in contrast, um, you know, forensic psychologists, for example, you know, those who study, again, the causes, treatment of criminal behavior, right? have developed theories about robberies that explain why certain people steal, perhaps, and forecast when people are more likely to steal. So they, there are actual testable predictions that are based upon this more you know, comprehensive theory uh, that is based on a number of diverse observations. The other kind of um, misconception is that a theory is just some kind of educated guess. Uh, you know, all general scientific explanations about how the world works basically are theories. Um, and a few theories are extremely well supported by multiple lines of evidence. For example, you know, Darwin's theory of evolution is backed by fossil evidence, genetic evidence, you know, genetic similarity amongst multiple species, physical similarities amongst species, you know, virus and bacterial evolution that's demonstrated in real time, etc. Um, I have a couple of uh, definitions I was going to read you to uh, that, that you know about what a scientific theory is. One, the first comes from the uh, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, or AAAS. Uh, a scientific theory is a well-substantiated explanation of some aspect of the natural world based on a body of facts that have been repeatedly confirmed through observation and experiment. Uh, such fact-supported theories are not guesses, but reliable accounts of the real world. And from the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, uh, the formal scientific definition of theory is quite different from the everyday meaning of the word. It, is, it refers to a comprehensive explanation of some aspect of nature that is supported by a vast body of evidence. You know, many scientific theories are so well established that no new evidence is likely to alter them substantially. For example, no new evidence will demonstrate that the Earth does not revolve around the sun, right, the orbit around the sun. That's heliocentric theory. Uh, or that living things are not made of cells. That's cell theory. Uh, or that matter is not composed of atoms. Or that the surface of the Earth is not divided into solid plates that have moved over geological time scales. the theory of plate tectonics, right? One of the most useful properties of scientific theories is that they can uh, be used to make predictions about natural events or phenomena that have not yet been observed.